I think The Last of Us is so good that this script basically writes itself. It's tricky though. I knew I was going to say something about it, but I wasn't sure how easy it would be. But as I watched, it was clearer and clearer. It's going to be very freaking easy. The Last of Us drew me in like a hungry brown bear to a school of salmon. And within the first five minutes, I knew the show was gold, but I didn't know why yet. And then about 20 minutes in, it hit me. This show is so freaking good at dialogue and subtext that it shouldn't be allowed. So real quick for those who don't know, dialogue can either be very in your face exposition, telling you what the story is so that you can get the plot moving, which is usually tedious to listen to and requires extremely good acting or directing to cover it up because the writers couldn't find a way to do away with it and can easily come off as fake. Or it can be so smartly written that the characters feel like real people because some other things in the show are shown to us or hinted at in a smart enough way that the characters can talk like real people that know what's happening in their story without having to say it to us or for us. This is referred to as subtext and it's so much more satisfying for the audience interestingly enough because we aren't being spoon fed, we're a big boy audience. Did you get that? Okay, let's go. It first hits me in the scene where Pedro Pascal's character, Joel, is talking to Tess about leaving the quarantine zone and there's so much tension, there's so little exposition and as an educated member of the film audience, I'm like, why? Why? then it clicks. You see, just a couple of minutes earlier, we see this. And we already know it's dangerous, even illegal to leave the QZ without even being told. And my usually spoon-fed by superhero movie brain is going, exposition, where's the exposition? While also feeling like, but understanding the story without being explicitly told feels good though. And then I pause. How long exactly have Craig Mazin and Neil Druckmann been doing this to me? And then I realize from the very beginning. Now to start the episode there's a scene where two scientists are being interviewed on tv as they discuss their points on what they think the next pandemic would be the first scientist says something about viruses and airplanes and the second one is like nope what he's terrified of is a parasitic mind controlling fungus getting strong enough to infect humans due to the earth getting warmer and we are gripped by his delivery of his assessment of the situation and i don't know if this is in the game or if it was added in now but wow this is good yeah of course us post 2020 covid era real life humans are probably slightly amused and terrified with what the virus guy says but it sets us up for the conversation about the fungus and the audience in the show sits gripped by fear and horror as though remembering the 2020 pandemic and thinking hey what if what if that was this fungus but billions of us billions of puppets with poisoned minds permanently fixed on one unifying goal to spread the infection to every last human alive by any means necessary. And it speaks to our brains in a deeper way than going all out screaming about impending doom would ever have. It's also very effective activism, I might add. And this show does it to us again and again from how Tess and Robert, her captor at the time, talk about Joel and what that means for how much his character has changed and darkened to smaller scenes like where he moves the cabinet to get his weapons a la John Wick and the camera and the edit catches the dust that falls off it, reminding us that he hasn't done what he's about to do in a very long time. And then there's the freaking creme de la creme. Actually, there's two. The first one is one of the final scenes where the sound design and Pedro Pascal's acting just sells the thoughts he's having. The flashes of his daughter dying in his arms, flooding through his mind, and he just can't let that happen again. And then this show has the audacity to keep this level of greatness till the last scene. So it's established before that Joe listens to the radio for cues using the decades the song came out as a code. A song from the 60s means nothing's in, 70s is new stock, and 80s means all hell's about to break loose. And so Joel, Ellie, and Tess head out into the wild, and Joel misses the last radio signal. And when we are taken back to the radio, it plays Never Let Me Down Again, a song by Depeche Mode, which is a song that came out in 1987. And that is how to start a great show. My name is Osereme, this is Cards and Reels, and make sure you're subscribed and I'll see you next week or sooner. Take care everyone.